How about that? <laughs> that's, a, that's an interesting one. It was cheap, local, and all-wheel drive, and a manual. Hey, there you which go. Which is a recipe for success, if you ask me. This will be fun. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. Today we're picking up a Honda Civic. What? I don't. How do I even start this? This is this thing's too ugly for a normal video intro. That is a Honda Van Wago that's been sitting at Phoenix's for I think about a year now, and before that, a long time in a shed somewhere on the other side of Ames. Either way, we're gonna see if we can get it running and driving. Let's go. Okay, so to tell the story from where it sits right now, we actually have to back up like a year? A little over a year. To a whole series of cars that you and I, I don't think ever published. Oh, uh, you no. published the Daytona. No, nope, not yet. No, the Daytona video is not even out. Four vehicles we brought off the property that have never seen the light of YouTube. Nope. And this, ironically, is going to be the first one. <laughs> what the hell is this thing? So, this is a five or six speed manual, four cylinder, uh, push button four wheel drive van, essentially. And I believe they are front wheel drive, and when you push a button, and it rear axle. Rear? Yeah. This is a Honda Civic, an all wheel drive manual four banger Honda Civic. And it's probably the ugliest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> you used to have one of these, didn't you? Yep. Uh, a few years ago, I had one. It was in a lot better shape than this one, unfortunately. But it was awesome. Got great gas mileage. Ran, ran drove fine. But as far as I know, um, I haven't really messed with this one. I threw a battery in it. I know it turns over, so the motor's not locked up. So should be should start. You pulled this sucker out of a shed. It was completely full of junk, and completely buried in that shed. So let's back up to see Phoenix wrenching redneck here on YouTube do just that, and then we will catch up with where we currently are. This is episode two of the shit you get me into because of Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> oh, we got a couple more cars in here. <laughs> we got a, a Dodge 1500 here, V8. Clean. It is stupid clean. Your buddy buying this? Yeah. Good. No rust on the it's rear. It's the cleanest one I've ever seen. This though. There it is. A Dodge Daytona. Oh my god, is this a turbo or an Fact, NH? Factory four cylinder turbo car. It is a turbo car. Uh, Where's all the turbo stickers? There it is. Turbo Z. What's the Z for? Zippity fast. <laughs> <laughs> is this what I think it is? Yes. They only made these a couple years that were four wheel drive. I believe right around 87. Honda Civic. Push button. Mine was a push button four wheel drive. Uh, oh, manual trans. Yep. Five speed. Wait, yeah, what is right this? here. Push button four wheel drive. Son of a gun. You can't see a thing. <laughs> they called these the Wago vans. Wago van. Yeah. <laughs> the wiggle van. The wiggle. This thing is covered in dust. It's a 12 valve. You know it's got power. <laughs> oh, there is a number 12. I thought it was just a rust valve. You bought this. I did. Are you you're reviving this too, I'm assuming? Oh, this is going to be my daily. <laughs> All right. Go check it out. Wrench and Redneck right here on YouTube, Phoenix's <laughs> channel. Bunch of stuff we got to get out of the inside of it. Was it? Oh, yeah. The whole thing is just packed. Dude, this is just Sigourney all over again. Really? Yeah, like... Less cars, though. Alright. Success on the first pull. Look at this thing. Tires are flat and all. Let's go ahead and go get hooked back up to the trailer over there and get her loaded up. Made it back to the shop. Let's take a look at this thing. This was... This was there before, but... She's a... Ultimate barn find. Ah, just by looking, I see a little bit of mouse nest, but I'm not seeing any wires chewed up or, or anything like that. So that's kind of kind of promising. I bet this thing fires. I've had one of these before, and uh, my old one I had to replace the front calipers because they were locked up. And the solenoid for the starter and the fuel pump. It's 40 and the wind is screaming, so I'm sure you can hear me. We gotta get the Honda off the trailer. As you can see, the tires need a little help. Throw some air in there and see if they air up so we roll it off. 
Please don't explode. Please don't explode. Yep, that's good enough. And that puts us right here where this has sat for, I think, a year since then. It is nasty inside. Like, yeah, this kind of the theme with everything from that place. Something horrible happened to the passengers. Yeah. <laughs> it's, all, it's got rust all over it. So yeah, it's this, just mutilated. This car was literally full up to here with just papers and junk, junk garbage, off. everything. No title in that pile, huh? Unfortunately, she didn't find one. We did have keys for this one, though. Oh. That was the biggest issue with every vehicle there. You're telling me we got a four-banger manual all-wheel drive car that's both rusted out and beat the hell like this other this side doesn't look too bad but this side's just demolished i'm looking at this as the perfect gambler 500 vehicle and we've already built the perfect gambler 500 vehicle it turned out to be the perfect autocross destroy all tires exhibition car <laughs> this one however i don't care to wrap around a tree the slightest yep. so let's take this sucker back and start prepping it to be the ultimate gambler 500 vehicle today we're just focusing on running and driving and then probably when it's warm out sometime or in the shop we'll do the rest of this stuff all right let's get this on bitch on trailer and get it home beef wagyu in the shop. Isaac, what the hell are we looking at? This uh, is uh, Mook's brother, by the way, who's going to be helping us for a couple months. <laughs> I forgot to mention that entirely. <laughs> um, he is going to school for automotive stuff up north in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. uh, was working at a shop. That shop had a terrible manager step in place, started running the place into the ground, and decided it was all Isaac's fault. Real fun guy. So they uh, let him go, and I said, well, that's a bunch of shit, so let's hire him on for a couple months. <laughs> so he's going to be here for a couple months helping us out on the channels and learning about some old car stuff. This Starting with this. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> May not be the best one to start with. <laughs> no, not even a, I don't even know what I'm looking at for a lot of this. I see we've got uh, vacuum lines, vacuum lines, vacuum lines, vacuum lines, some vacuum lines and uh, spark plug wires. I think there's like a cult following for these. Well, it's a Civic, so. That's true. <laughs> but what this one, you guys gotta understand, there's no title, it's super rusty. It's pretty much a parts car, so we're gonna at least have some fun with it before it probably becomes an actual parts car. Oh, there we go, yeah. Oh. oh. Has it got oil? It's black. Yeah, that's good enough. Oh, there's an O2 sensor. That's probably not good. That probably means we have a computer-controlled carburetor, which yeah. is probably going to be a nightmare. Let's see if it comes to life at all. Hmm. Dude, this thing is so gross inside. It is mad. Oh, that's horrible. Oh! Oh! Ready? Ready. Oh! What was that? I have no idea. Well, it spun for a second. <laughs> now it doesn't spin at all. <laughs> what the hell kind of car did you sell us, Phoenix? <laughs> that sounded like it hydro locked on something. <laughs> let's uh, let's do that. Let's pull our plugs and try again. Oh, <laughs> oh no! A little gnarly in there. I'm gonna call it now. It'll be a miracle if we get this thing running. <laughs> yeah. What is this thing? What the hell is this what? thing? Oh, it's for the dipstick. Oh. It's a hoppy dip stripper. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> oh, dude. What in the hell is going on here? <laughs> that might be the nastiest spark plug I've ever seen. It's got some crust on it. 
Hmm. Holy crap. Okay, yeah, I say we need to take those out. Yeah, that'd be a good starting point. Then we'll see if it spins. Yeah, those are bad. <laughs> So apparently some water definitely got into this motor while it sat outside for the last year. Uh, hopefully we get these plugs out and we get all that to flush out, throw some PV blast or something in there and we're okay. We'll see. All right, Isaac, let's see what happens. All right, here we go. <laughs> Dude, so much water came out. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Still puking water. <laughs> Maybe just keep going. Okay. Um, now what? Get a new car. <laughs> <laughs> You've had worse ideas. <laughs> Let's see if we got spark. If you want to crank her again, sir. We got great spark. That's good. Get some new plugs in this. Hit it with some flammable liquids and see if it makes noise. Oh, it's it's not unbolted. The frame is still there. It's just oh, oh my god. <laughs> oh. Holy god. Oh, it stinks so bad. Straight in the dumpster. It's like goop <laughs> on my fingers. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, we uh we won't be needing those anymore. Oh, oh. leg room in the back. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. Is there any floor that it's even attached to anymore? <laughs> oh. oh my god. You can see straight through the car. Oh man. Like, there's nothing there. <laughs> what, what yeah, just... that, I thought that was all just sand. It's like goopy stuff. Yuck. This might be the grossest car we've ever, I don't know. It's pretty nasty. It's up there. There's like, this stuff everywhere. I don't know what this is. Oh. It <coughs> smells it, so bad. Why is it, <laughs> why is it jiggle? It's I was. Like, just, it's so wet. I wish I could get that side out of my mind. Oh no! I have to edit it. I have to see it again. <laughs> this is the grossest car I've worked on. I'm just saying something. Cause I found a dead cat in one of them. What? At the shop I worked at. Wait. <laughs> It was a dead cat? Yeah, it was like um, it was a big Ford SUV, and uh, the owner was very messy. It looked like they lived in it. They just took the back seats out and just threw a bunch of crap in there. And so I get in, and it smells like death. And so I bring it around. I'm checking the quarter panels on the outside, and I look in, and there's a little cat carrier oh, with something no. furry in it. Oh, in the cat carrier? In the cat carrier. Oh. I take a closer look and there's just a dead cat in there. That was an awful day. <laughs> and this is worse. And here we are. <laughs> Here's what we'll do. We'll see if it runs. We'll rip all the carpet out and we'll pressure wash the rest of the inside. That sounds like a plan. Okay. All right. Back to uh, wire wheeling spark plugs. All right. Plugs are back in. Isaac, you want to do the, do the honors? Give it a little throw. Like half maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nothing. Isaac, are you wrecking the chair? I'm trying to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's a quality chair. Wonder if we didn't get enough moisture out of the cylinders or what's going on. Let me get this air cleaner off. We'll try it again. All right, I got the air cleaner off. It was a nightmare, but not nearly as much of a nightmare as the amount of vacuum lines on this motor. Look at that. Like, my God. I had to take off one, two, uh, three large hoses, and one, two, three, four little ones, and then an electrical connection as well as, as, well as that, and a heat riser. It's ridiculous. What the hell? It's full of liquid. Go full throttle again. What the hell? It's like a puddle in there. See the liquid? Yeah. Okay, we've got a little playing to do. Okay, oh so a little time has passed, and as you can maybe see, everything is very spackled colored. Blew in the carburetor with a bunch of compressed air and got a whole bunch of water out. Uh, the intake's still damp. It's the best I could do. 
but we got the standing liquid out. So <laughs> we're gonna throw the once again dried off plugs back in and try it again. I think it'll have a chance in hell now. Yeah, there we go. That's how much water I got out. <laughs> it was nasty. All right, attempt 47. There we go. Go ahead, sir. God dang it, dude. What is this thing's deal? Maybe we get another booster pack on it and get some more RPM into that cranking speed. All right, try her again. More power. Nothing. It has liquid down in there again. I don't know if that's the brake clean I sprayed in or what. Full throttle crank. I'm gonna blow this in. We'll see if we can just flush it out. Alright. Ready? Yep. There's still some shit down in there. I don't know what it is. Alright, crank it again. Just getting nothing out of this motor. Let's open the motor up again, pull the plugs out, open our throttle blades. I don't know if I even mentioned it, but the secondary seized. I gotta like hammer it open. <laughs> so we'll do that, blow it out, and then go to lunch. Let it like dry out for a while. I don't know what the hell is going on. This is weird. All right, we're back again. We went to lunch, left the plugs out, left the throttle wide open, let it air out. Then we came back, we put the shot back on the carb and sealed it off and let it pull air through each cylinder, through the plug hole, up the intake, out the carb for like two minutes on each hole. And we've got new plugs which look a thousand times better. Yeah. So. There we go. It is spraying shit out of the carb still. Is, like it's- Is it filling up? No, it, well, I don't know, but it's not like it's breathing the correct direction, which would kind of make sense that we're seeing stuff puddle in the intake instead of being... Yeah, if it's being pushed out rather yeah, than pulled in. Yeah, pushed instead of pulled. Yep, there's all the brake clean right there. But I, I watched it spray air out of each cylinder when it was when we were cranking it earlier. That's true. You know what? Do I have starting fluid? So the answer the whole time was starting fluid because it doesn't puddle, it stays more atomized. I've never ever seen that happen before. I think the problem is it's going to go uphill into the motor. All right, let's do it again. Go ahead. I think we're out of battery again. It ran though for a it second. Ran. It ran. A lot of people complain that we use brake clean on the channel. Uh, honestly, I think brake clean is a lot softer of a fluid than starting fluid. This shit is harsh. That you could hear it, it was causing spark knock. It dries out rings really bad. This shit, this is the stuff that's bad to start an engine on. Brake clean's not that bad. So it's very interesting to see that for once I actually had to use starting fluid instead of brake clean or gas. It was, that was a very unique scenario. Must have been a little moisture left and this took care of it. Yeah. Let's go find a battery. That'd be nice. I gotta wonder if it's not only a puddling issue, which doesn't make a ton of sense, but if it only runs on this, because this is a higher flash point, and the compression in this engine is so low that it needs this to make up for the lack of compression, that it won't run on gas or this. So that could be another thing that's happening here. Mm. Either way, we've got a boat tank hooked up to the fuel pump, plumbed into that doodad, 
So let's see. Ready to go? Yeah, let's see what she do. All right, go for it. pump works man that thing uses so little fuel to run <laughs> it just like <laughs> constantly floods out <laughs> see if we go out the brake clean ready yep <laughs> ah oh, what was that it just backfired a little oh. it was running though the accelerator pump diaphragm exploded it's leaking all over the bottom Good. Which means, unfortunately, our carbs are gonna have to come off for sure, so it doesn't start a fire. Which, oh my God, that looks like a three-hour thing. Go ahead. Crank her again. Oh, stop. <laughs> now it's gonna be flooded to hell. <laughs> the needle and seat didn't work. Seats, no bueno. I can't get him to. Can't get the free up. Oh, there's a lot in there. Take the, the air hose and blow down into the square hole. Careful, the gas might fly out. Oh, great. Oh. <laughs> Unflooded. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if it works. <laughs> No, oh, there's a lot in there. What, what, why are you beeping so much? God, it's annoying. Because the battery works ah. now. What? What was that? That's, that's the, the wiper motor thing it keeps doing. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm just trying to get the key out. Kevin. That's all. <laughs> go for it. Here we go. Oh, no. Try to... <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. It's... It's hydro locked on fuel. Oh. It's gone from hydro locked on water to hydro locked on fuel. Okay. So we know we have an engine that will run yeah. if it's fed cro properly. And we know we have a <laughs> <laughs> fuel <laughs> straight down my throat. And we know we have a carburetor that sucks. Let's fix that part, which is going to be a task. Mm, there's a lot of lines going into this. Oh my god, there's so many. Maybe we'll roll it outside and rip the interior out at the same time. That sounds fun. I already put a hole in the floor. <laughs> How bad is the floor underneath? Or is there a floor underneath? I mean, it didn't look terrible what? until I put my foot through it. Oh my god. <laughs> this car's junk. Yeah. Ah, progress. How are things in here? Oh, it's going. Just cracked in the center console. Dude. And Dude. voila! Holy shit. Yeah, man, that's that probably is... where the mouse came from earlier. <laughs> oh, that's definitely where he came from. Look how clean this thing is. I think I know why our shifter doesn't work. <laughs> the mouse nest. Oh, dude, it's the cables. Oh, they're, they're just, they're just hacked. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. We've got everything vacuumed out. As you can see, there's virtually nothing there, but what we need to confirm is where the safe spots and danger spots are. So if we hit a rock, like right here per se, we need to make sure the rock doesn't go through. So let's test that. Oh, oh man. There's a weak one. There's okay. a weak one. Okay, all right, that's checked. There's weak, it's a little weak there. <laughs> Ooh, that's solid. And that's solid. Okay, so that spot needs addressed. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't sit there. <laughs> this thing's so bad. I don't know if this will pass an inspection. <laughs> Thank God we don't have them here. <laughs> yeah. And here we have the damage from the rock. That's <laughs> a big rock. <laughs> here, can I see the light? Yeah. There's all the rubble. <laughs> see, that's just... 
the uh, pile of danger percentage we were in. That's weight reduction. I saved a life or three. Yeah. All right, let's get the garden hose out, finish this off, and call it a night. Sounds good to Since me. it's like 33 degrees outside. <laughs> Can't get that side yet. Good morning everyone and welcome back. Uh, last night we got the garden hose out, sprayed down the entire interior. Um, it stinks a little less. This morning Isaac is working on getting our uh, transmission shifter freed up because they had that mouse nest there, it was rusted to hell. I am sourcing a carb rebuild kit and some good off-road tires for this thing. And then hopefully by this afternoon, we got ourselves a little wood runner. So here's what we're gonna do. We're both gonna grab onto this. Oh lord! And just pull. <laughs> just, where do I grab? I have no idea. Did it go back on the studs? It better not have. Is it off on that one? Yeah, it's off. Maybe we just twist it up. Give <laughs> her hell! <laughs> oh. Okay, you got electrical connection over here. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Look at all the fuel in the Holy intake. Holy crap! This is like the worst car I've ever had to work on. And I've worked on some stupid shit. But this is some stupid shit. It's free. The click of success. No, it's not free yet. Oh. <laughs> that Damn. literally took like 45 minutes. And most of it, <laughs> yeah. most of it was not done correctly. Like <laughs> it's it's like 11 o'clock now. <laughs> <laughs> we started that at like, what, nine? Yeah. <laughs> Yesterday? <laughs> yeah. You can buy a Weber kit from Redline that goes right on there and gets rid of all these vacuum lines. It's $400, okay? That's Jeez. a lot of money. The reason people convert these Civics to the Weber is to get rid of all those vacuum lines and take the easy route. However, I think there's an easier, cheaper route that no one does because it's a very daunting task looking at all those vacuum lines and they probably don't do this as often as I do, but for uh, also they're driving theirs on the road, which we're not going to be doing. They want theirs to be like have a working choke and all the control systems in EGR and all that stuff so that it runs and gets the like supposed 60 miles per gallon it's supposed to get. We don't care because <laughs> we're going to be driving through the woods somewhere. So with that being said, I see a lot of stuff on here I don't need and I can just start ripping shit off. Plug those, plug those, plug that one that we broke off to get off uh, we can probably leave a couple of these and hook it back up, it doesn't really matter, or I will just eliminate all of the vacuum system on this car so that none of it's a problem. And this will purely be a mechanical car rigger because I imagine most of the stuff it needs to run vacuum from is all internal anyway. So yeah, that's what I'm thinking right now. I'm gonna rip all the extra crap off this, probably throw it in the ultrasonic, clean it up, uh, throw the new rebuild kit in it from O'Reilly's, and then just start ripping vacuum lines off that car. The only ones I need, to keep. I don't know, this car's weird. Usually I need a vacuum line for the distributor, one for the transmission if it's an automatic, something to run your HVAC controls, one for the brake booster, and then in this case, something to run that four-wheel drive, because I imagine the four-wheel drive is vacuum controlled. It is an electronic push button on the dash. Maybe it's electric somewhere, a solenoid. That would be incredible, because then I can just get rid of all of the vacuum controls in this car, all the emissions everything and make this really simple, which is what you want for off-roading. Not that this really counts as true off-roading, but yeah. Let's do it. What's the worst that can happen? All right, so as I'm tearing into this, I'm realizing there's a million parts to this carburetor. I need a much better way to organize where I'm putting all those parts so I don't lose them and get them mixed up. And that is where the new bolster is going to come into play. I haven't used this sucker yet, pretty excited about it. Just like the old design, it's got this honeycomb that you can shove bolts into. They are chemical resistant, heat resistant, all that good stuff. And I believe they have a lifetime warranty. But this one has a whole bunch of different sizes and a tray. These things are awesome. I absolutely love them. If you want to get one for yourself, head to bolster.com slash discounts slash JYD20 for 20% off. I'll put a link in the description below. For now, let's get all of our crap organized here with all these Teflon seals and stuff like that I need to make sure don't run away on me and I can take all these and stick them in here in the orientations of which they came out and kind of draw out my parts thank you to guys at Bolster check them out once again bolster.com slash discounts slash JYD20 all right let's get this thing ripped apart all right 
That disaster of a carburetor is in there. It wasn't terribly dirty. It's just, it was just dumb. <laughs> All right, lunch time. Well, that took a long ass time. Yeah, that was like all afternoon. That was the most tedious car reveal I've ever done. And I'm just hoping it's right at this point. Now that that's done, we're gonna go into here and figure out everything that we can disconnect because we've disabled all of its little controls and we're just gonna basically run this thing mechanical. It's never gonna be perfect like Honda's apparently intended it to be, but it'll be good enough to drive around and that's all we need. This brain box right here is just a bunch of vacuum solenoids, believe it or not. So we can remove that, all of this, all of these, uh, this box, whatever these canisters are, whatever the hell that thing is, uh, charcoal canister down there. This needs to stay, this is our four x four. We need one vacuum line for this right here. And there's also one running to the brake booster from the intake, so that one's good to go. So yeah, let's make that happen. Ta-da! Yeah, that is a lot better. We ripped out our charcoal canister, uh, our control box one, control box two, the surge tanks, uh, the EGR thingy, and we just got this, you know, turbo blow-off uh, wastegate pipe here. Because it's a sweet, Civic. Make some sweet noises. We've got all of our vacuum lines removed and plugged off all the way around the intake. Uh, I've got the vacuum running to the four-wheel drive actuator and vacuum running to the advanced side of our advanced retard canister on our distributor. We also have our brake booster line over here which runs off the intake. The only thing I wasn't able to find was a vacuum line that goes inside to run our HVAC controls. And in that case if we don't provide them with vacuum they're just going to stay stuck on the frost which is the only thing I would ever need in this car. So I think we can bolt the carburetor on and see if this thing runs. Here you are, sir. Oh no, our modified and rebuilt carburetor. Now, I should mention, I actually ended up doing one more modification that we didn't mention when we talked about this thing earlier. This right here is a uh, little screw I added. A little cheeky as, screw. Yeah, as you can see, this is now a manual carburetor. <laughs> <laughs> it's a manual secondary. So, worked out oddly well. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see if it works, but this, could be amazing. You never know. Could be. Could be. All right. We're all hooked up. Here we go. Go ahead. Oh, close. Flooded. I'm still trying to. I'm holding it wide open, trying to get it to breathe that fuel through. Oh, come on, you old girl. That thing ran, that ran so good. <laughs> I cracked the secondary open once and it was like, Dwoop. Jesus. <laughs> that, there's a bit of oil in there. A little bit. <laughs> we got a little work to figure out the idling issue. I don't, there's no adjustments to that carburetor, by the way. Fun little factoid. Let's try it again. Maybe it'll clear out. Yeah. Hang on, let me, let me plug a fan in.
Well, <laughs> I can't get it to run at anything that is low throttle angle without accelerator pump. So, might have to do a little research there and get creative, but it runs. It does. This is this is it's very be ballsy. Fun. It's very ballsy. Sixty-one horsepower. <laughs> Let's call that a night. Come back tomorrow. Work on some brakes. Yeah, fuel system. This some bitch is gambler ready. Yeah. All right. We'll see you then. Isaac, uh, we're back. Here we are. I believe we left off with a card that didn't want to idle. Uh, I realize I never set the float height, so hopefully that's what the issue is. Otherwise, I got two jets backwards inside the carb. Otherwise, I don't know what's wrong with it. We have sourced ourselves some junkyard rims because we're going to put some tires on here, but we can't get the tires in time, so today we're just going to focus on finishing part one of our all-wheel drive off-road Honda build with a running and driving car, uh, probably minus brakes. You don't need those. Oh, I totally forgot to mention, I did some research on this the other day uh, after we left. The third barrel, it's actually a miniature carburetor inside this carburetor that's controlled by the same linkages and then flows through completely different ports through the intake that do not connect at all with these two barrels and then through its own port in the head, through its own valve, tiny little valve in the head, and into a pre-combustion chamber in front of the spark plug, what? which is why this is a 12 valve engine. What's the point of that? Uh, missions. Oh. It allowed them to run without catalytic converters all the way up till 1978. Oh. Yeah, super bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> little little ordeal here, so yeah, but it does a really rich mixture through this hole and then two lean mixtures through here. Also from what I can tell, there's no mixture screw adjustment for idle. So nice. Yeah, I don't I don't know what to do about that one. <laughs> if you wanna learn more about that, you can look up the Honda C V C C system. These both look like idle jets to me. One of them has emulsion tubes, the other one does not. That's why I think I got them backwards and it's affecting the fact that they're idle. So as you can hopefully see, one of these is the same diameter all the way across and the other one steps down and then has emulsion tube holes. So I don't know why they would be different, but they are. The internet couldn't tell me shit about which one goes where. And honestly, I forgot which one I just took out of where. <laughs> try it this way. All right, get this tightened back down and try it again. All right. Took the easy route. Hook the smoker up. Looks like we got a hell of a vacuum leak right there. Um, and I forgot to put that little solenoid on the back of the carb. But beyond that, <laughs> I, I think that's all. <laughs> Yo, it's a Civic. Oh, it should be vaping, bro. <laughs> Looky there. <laughs> all right, so let's plug those off and we'll be good to go. All right, well, as you can see, a little more leak on the back, put that solenoid back on, and shoved a screw in that little plastic piece right there, and now our only vacuum leak is out the top of the car, obviously. Let's hook it all up and try it again. Look at that, it idles! Dude, it idles like perfect! 800 RPM? Bullshit off and it'll run so much cleaner. That is awesome. Alright, let's figure out our fuel tank and go take this thing for a rip. Yeah. Yes. Something like that. Oh, that's always good. <laughs>
Just the front one, Spud. came on and it launched harder that yeah the time. the back one spun did it yeah dude the four-wheel drive works <laughs> and it turns back off in fact the whole car turns off don't mind the little metal hanging down there <laughs> <laughs> there's something underneath that goes wham 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 against the floor as you're driving we'll have to take a look at that nah. <laughs> well, let's load this thing up and take it home and have a little fun with it take it for a little spin take it for a little spin and then order the rest of our parts for yeah. part two all right, we'll see you at the farm. Morning, Isaac. Hey. You look all bundled up. I'm all cozy. You still have the Carhartt tag on your hat. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fashion choice. Yeah, just like that, next thing you know, it's winter in Iowa, and it sucks out today. It's like 22 degrees and Maybe. windy as hell. Either way, we've got some antifreeze we're going to throw in this thing because it probably needs it. And then we're going to fire this up and go see what she'll do. What do you say? Let's get her going. Let's get her going. It didn't get any quieter with the door shut. No, it definitely didn't. I don't know why. Oh, dude, the heat works. Does it? It does. Is it coming out warm? Yeah, it's coming out warm. Oh, I can feel it. <laughs> Not all the way up the temp yet, but the gauge is moving, so that'll it probably works. get better. Yeah. Don't kill it on camera, that'd be embarrassing. <laughs> My seat is not going to survive this journey. <laughs> Probably not. And when you fall, you're going straight into my knee. <laughs>
lot steeper in person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pop the hood, see what's going on under there. I won't worry about that. Uh, horsepower restrictions are melting off. <laughs> well, I suppose that's a pretty good proof of concept. So at this point, we're gonna park this and order the rest of the parts we need. And then when the day comes that it's time to prep this for the Gambler 500, be it the OG 500 or something local, we'll pull this sucker out, put all those parts on, and go off-roading with it. This is a parts car that we're gonna have some fun with, do some Gambler things then. When we're done, we'll sell it, part it out. Cause I know apparently uh, everyone wants the drive line out of this to put in their drag civics. I can see why it's pretty, pretty I mean, decent it, all wheel drive system. It held up. It didn't sound like it was holding up. <laughs> no. It sounded like quite the opposite. Either way, thanks for Phoenix for pulling this sucker out of the shed and giving it to us a year later. Thanks to Isaac for all his help. Thanks to Mook and the rest of the crew to help behind the scenes. Make sure you guys like, subscribe. We'll see you right here next week on another episode of Junkyard Days. Peace.